on a rock mountain, Norway. Seeing a girl named Nora climbing a mountain with her father, seeing the stone mountain around them, Nora's father was reminded of the tales of trolls. In the past, during trolls' wedding, there were thirteen trolls who were drunk and forgetting the time, when the sun came and its rays hit their bodies, thirteen trolls froze and turned into a stone mountain. Teenage Nora thinks all these stories are just fairy tales for children, until when her father says Nora have to believe it to see it, Nora starts to close her eyes and see the faces of trolls on the mountain. Twenty years later, when the government was focused on excavating Mount Davra to realize the construction of a new railroad, it was seen that there were some demonstrators who disagreed because the excavation was considered to have damaged nature. To speed up the excavation process, the workers agreed to blow up the mountain. After the explosion, a strange thing suddenly happened. Dozens of military planes were immediately sent to inspect the situation at the site. From the inspection, it was found that there were giant footprints moving towards the south. Because the situation was getting worried, the military was forced to discuss this matter with the Prime Minister. At the operational headquarters of the Norwegian Armed Forces, the Prime Minister arrives with his advisor named Andreas. There were also experts from various fields, including Nora who currently works as a professor of paleontology. In that meeting, the experts began to speculate about the footprints they found, at the meeting none of them believed that the evidence found was footprints, because logically no creature had footprints that big. However, the results of their discussion were finally refuted when they saw evidence in the form of a video recording from the cell phone of one of the demonstrators. In the video, it is clear that there is a stone monster coming out of Mount Davra. The creature they called a beast continued to walk south and destroy every place it passed. After that, Nora and Andreas were immediately sent to investigate an area called Lesia. Nora and Andreas met with a military captain named Chris. Chris explained that his troops had searched the area and the creature's footprints stopped about 20 kilometers from that location. Then they tried to interrogate one of the elderly couples affected by the rock monster. The husband and wife said that the rock monster looked like a moving stone mountain. In addition, they also heard a very loud roar from the monster. Then Nora examined the footprints of the rock monster but found no genetic markers other than the presence of rock and soil. This also made Nora remember troll fairy tale that her father had told her before. Even though Nora doesn't want to believe the story, all the evidence seems to point to one creature, troll. Nora, Andreas, and Chris finally went to Nora's father's house. It turns out that, now Nora's father has a mental disorder due to troll research he was doing, no one believes in his research so Nora's father is exiled by the state. Now Nora's father can finally prove that all of his research is real, because of that, Nora's father is finally included in the investigation mission. Until now, Nora and the others still don't believe in everything Nora's father said, it's hard for them to believe that trolls actually exist in the real world. Nora argued with her father about it. Until finally they saw Troll immediately wake up behind them. It turned out that Troll had been there and was camouflaged as Rock Mountain. Nora immediately reported the incident to the government, of course the government did not believe it when Nora's father said that the monster was a troll. He was even considered insane and expelled from the operational headquarters. Nora asks the Prime Minister to prove her father's words, but the Prime Minister decides to leave the case to the military. Nora's father was very disappointed with the decision taken by the Prime Minister, Nora's father felt that Troll was lonely and confused. People might resort to the path of violence to drive away trolls, but he was sure that nature would not stand still. Hearing that, Nora finally obeyed her father's words. They also joined the military in the attack tonight. Long story short, the attack finally started, the military started shooting trolls with various weapons at their disposal, but it was in vain because trolls are stones that cannot be penetrated by any weapon. The attack made troll even more angry. Troll countered their attack and killed so many military troops, he even swallowed one soldier who was injured at that time. At this rate, they would all die for nothing. Nora's father was desperate to greet Troll and tried to calm him down, but when Troll began to calm down, someone attacked him from behind, so that Troll became angry and hit Nora's father. In his dying seconds, Nora's father says palace, king, and house. 
Of course everything Nora's father mentioned was probably related to Troll. After her father's death, Nora believes more and more that the creatures they are facing right now are trolls like in the fairy tale world, if it matches the fairy tale world, trolls will be frightened by the sound of the bells. To prove this, Nora and the others carried out their actions by bringing several bells to troll. Unexpectedly, their suspicions actually happened. It turns out that the fairy tale that Nora's father has been telling all this time is a true story. Then the news of the chaos quickly spread in various countries, people started panic and urged the government to immediately solve the problem. Especially now that it is known that trolls are starting to move towards the capital. Back at operational headquarters, Nora suggests they find out more about trolls before they take any further action. Even though Nora had proven her words, the heads of government and the prime minister still disagreed with Nora's opinion, they chose to destroy troll using a missile. Based on this decree, the people in the capital were immediately evacuated to empty the operational target area. Nora and Andreas disagree with that decision, because what the government is doing will only destroy the capital area. When Nora was thinking, she suddenly remembered what her father had said before he died, her father had said about kings, houses, and palaces. Unexpectedly all of that led to one place namely the royal palace. They met with a senior official named Richard Sending, Richard's name was mentioned several times in Nora's father's diary, so Nora thought that Richard might know something about this incident. Arriving at the royal palace, Richard showed a hidden tunnel, unexpectedly the Norwegian royal palace was built on top of the troll kingdom. For the sake of that development, they slaughtered all troll families. Until there is only one descendant of trolls, trolls who are now raging out there. From that information, confirming that everything Nora's father said was true, they now realize all they need is one thing to stop trolls and that is sunlight. Quickly, Nora and Andreas went to the capital to stop the bombing. Nora also asked Captain Chris to help them. On the other hand, Andreas contacted his partner to hack into the operational headquarters system. According to their plan, they succeeded in thwarting the bombing that was to be carried out by the government. At the same time, Nora and Andreas brought Troll's skeletal head. They tried to lure Trolls to a location that had been determined by Captain Chris. Once there, Captain Chris turned on some lights which made Troll in pain. Seeing this, Nora felt sorry for him. Nora said that this was not what she wanted. She couldn't bear to hear the screams of pain from Troll, Nora cried and screamed asking Troll to go and return to the mountain, but at the same time, the sun began to rise and made Troll burn and turn into a rock. Then, the Rock Hill was later named Tobias Hill, same like Nora's father name. Then the film ends.